Now we're doing 1D dynamic programming. So we have this climbing stairs problem. It's an easy problem and we're going to check it out. So we're going to leadcode.com slash problem slash climbing stairs slash description. So here's the climbing stairs problem. And this is a dynamic programming problem. So you are climbing a staircase. It takes n steps to reach the top. All right. You each time you can either climb one or two steps in how many distinct ways can you climb to the top like they're asking the number of different ways you could climb to the top while you could climb either one step at a time or two steps at a time now we have an example one we have an input which is n is equal to two this means that the number of steps um like it takes n steps like n is equal to two steps to reach the top and the output is two you can find two different ways one is there are two ways to climb to the top one step you could take one step so one step plus one step or you could take the two step you know format so over here we have example two we have uh, it's total of three steps and the output is three explanation there are three ways to climb to the top either one step plus one step plus one step or one step then take the two step or first take the two step then take the one step now the end could be within 1 to 45 I'll get the number of steps and you know the solution we have to come upon with now this is a dynamic programming problem which means we have to break it up into sub problems and uh, we're gonna have to use some dp dynamic programming approach so quickly let's just google search what dynamic programming is right c plus plus so dynamic programming or dp so it's gonna say Dynamic programming refers to the programming paradigm in which the solution of the subproblems is memoized to avoid re-evaluation. So memoization is something that when we recalculate something, we don't want to calculate it over and over. So when we have the one step plus two step, we don't want to calculate this again since we could already use the two step. It's like a common approach in Fibonacci sequence and it creates a tree um, and we basically go and recur. I mean, we, we tend to like it's not compulsory to use recursion but you could also use the other dynamic approach so dp is the op optimization of recursion that can only be applied to problems that have the optimal substructure now over here it like kind of tells you the fibonacci sequence where we have fib of four when we want to calculate the fib of four we calculate the fib of three and fib of two right when we calculate the fib of three and fib of two we have to calculate now let's look at the uh, rightmost side and over here we have to calculate the fib of two and fib of one well, you could see that when fib of 2 is the same exact at 1 and 0, you have the same thing over here. So we want to memoize the solution so that we don't repeat the thing again and again. And that's why we use um, dynamic programming. It's a method used in mathematics and computer science to solve complex problems by breaking them down into simpler sub-problems sub by solving each sub-problem only once and storing the results. It avoids redundant computations, leading to more efficient solutions for a wide range of problems. And that's exactly the purpose to avoid redundancy. Uh, redundancy by storing solutions DP ensures that each sub problem is solved by only once reducing computation time computation time is pretty important and we don't want to keep repeating uh, the thing over and over this is a simple Fibonacci sequence you already know the brute force uh, approach is this um, and then and term of Fibonacci series um, so this is basically a very classical problem and then there's a knapsack uh, problem that also uses DP and uh, you know there's two approaches for dynamic programming one is top-down approach which is memoization and then the bottom-up approach which is tabulization or tabulation so tabulation in the bottom -up approach also known as uh, tabulation uh, we start with the smallest sub problem and gradually build up to the final solution and in uh, top-down approach we basically start with the final solution and recursively break it down to break it down to smaller sub problems okay and uh, that's basically it uh, you know, you know the difference between the two. We could use two different approaches for dynamic programming, uh, either from you know breaking from the final solution to sub problems, which is you know top to down, uh, top down approach, memoization, and the bottom up is basically um, solve by breaking them down into smaller sub and storing their solutions for future use. Basically, um, bottom up means we start with the smallest sub problems and gradually build up to the final solution, which is tabulation. Okay, so. Um, over here we have the climb stairs we have a you know larger solution and we want to break it into a smaller solution so we're basically using top-down approach okay 
and that is known as memoization. So over here we have the stairs n. We can break it to smaller uh, steps. So if the step is either just one, all right, if we just have one step, what we can do is we can just return one because we already have one step to do it, right? Um, and in case we have like suppose two steps, so I could say if n is two steps, right? The number of steps uh, in that stairs is two. We could just return two different ways to do it, as it was explained over here. Like over here, we had number of two. Then we're basically one plus one and two steps. It's always going to be the same. And if it's one step, it's always going to be the one step. Okay. So now after the two, we need to know like in three steps how do we calculate this, right? This. So for that particular case. What we could use is um, this approach where I'm going to have to, first of all, store some in a vector. So I could use a vector um, dynamic array and I'm going to put ints inside and I'm going to use, I'm going to call it as dynamic P DP, which is that the size would be n plus one and everything will be initialized to zero. Now you will understand this later on and let me just, um, import this or yeah include this so I'm gonna include the vector okay so we have the vector header file included now we have the vector vector header file included we have um, this climb stairs we have n is um, one we have return one if n is two we have return two and now we have this vector created uh, which stores ints called dp it has a size of n plus one meaning if the steps are like a total of three, it's going to do four size and everything will be initialized to zero. Okay. So first of all, what we want to do is assume that we have the size of climb series as three over here. Okay. I'm just assuming we have three over here. If we have three, we're going to, you know, do this. We're going to skip all these. And once we reach here, we're going to have four inserted here and four will be the size and it will all be assigned to zero. Now we could actually assign manually the first memoization approach where we could have the the first one which is um you know one in one steps basically i'm skipping the zeroth place because i want to actually start and talk about uh each step so i'm talking about like if there is one step how many steps it would take go one right and if there was two steps because i'm not going in a zero step doesn't make sense the the stair doesn't have zero steps um yeah, it, it would start ultimately basically you could actually have it like DP zero and it would take zero steps but if you notice over here I already assign everything to zero so that means DP sub zero would always be zero so in in a one step staircase we'd always have one step to go right in a two step staircase we'd have two different ways to go depending on how we could approach right one step or two steps and then in the uh, remaining which is from I uh, three to onwards what we could do is we could uh, use an approach and we have to find a, some kind of recursive uh, function so for that we basically use a for loop and I start with three because that's where we have to go we have to go all the way till the n value which is less than equal to n and then we just keep you know jumping around so we keep going incremented by one now the thing is, what's happening here is that we're using the i minus 1. If we look at it, right now it's 3. We're using the 2, which is over here. The second step, the previous one. And we're adding it with the other step, which was before it. So essentially what we're doing is we're, ste uh, we're stepping one step back. So if I'm talking about 3... I will have to get the dp of 2 which is this one value of 2 and we have to get the dp of i which is 1 so it basically computes to i 2 plus 1 which is 3 and the number of steps which is 3 would be for dynamic of you know 3 index so I could just say i like this and equal it like this I hope you got this because this is going to be for 3 but for four, it would be the two steps before, and then for five, it would be for two steps before, depending on what the use case is. And and ultimately, we'll have something uh, that we could, you know, come upon. And, uh, you know, we know for a fact that these are all basically stored. Now, once we have everything plotted, we could actually return the DP of what we have to actually see. 
we have to see the d dynamic programming of um, n, which is you know the number. So if it's like three, or if it's four, or if it's five. So I'm just saying, let's say once everything is done within the for loop, I can just return the dp of n. That's basically going to be the last part, which is right here, and that's going to be our answer, which is the return type here. And this is our complete solution. If we run this control and comma, so let's see if it runs all the test cases. And if we look at it, we have a compilation error. And we have a uh, line number five, go all the way to line number five. And of, of course, we had to put over here um, expected parameter declarator. declarator. Uh, so we had to put a parameter, actually. So it was in. Uh, climb stairs and then we had int I guess it was n yeah so number of steps so control and comma and now it should work of course now we have accepted uh, this we have an input of n is equal to 2 output was 2 and the expected was 2 perfect and then when it was 3 it was output what I gave is 3 and the expected was 3 uh, my program gave it really correctly and uh, you know this was the entire solution for this if we could just get the explanation uh, just one second and uh, we'll just get one uh, explain the following C++ code okay so we're gonna have okay the C++ code is a solu solution to the cl classic climbing stairs problem using dynamic programming. Your problem statement is that you are climbing a staircase with n steps. You can either climb one or two steps at a time. You need to determine the number of distinct ways to reach the top. Let's break down the code. So we have basically this solution where we have a vector, we have a solution, and over here we have this. Um, basically what we have here is we have a uh, class solution, and inside we have a public access specifier which has the in climb stairs. We have an in n. Um, and then when we have this, we have this n is equal to 1, which is returns 1. If n is equal to 2, it returns 2. Basically, it just repeats the whole thing. And what we want, we want to do is we want to see the, ex um, you know, the explanation. So the staircase, uh, the climb stairs solution or function takes an integer n as input representing the number of steps in the staircase. And then the function first checks if n is equal to 1 or 2. If so, it directly returns 1 or 2, respectively, because there's only one way to climb one step and two steps. Uh, two ways to uh, so basically it only returns one way to uh, climb one way to climb one step and two ways to climb two steps so essentially like we could just plot it out like this right after that if n is greater than two it initializes a vector dp of a size n plus one where each element represents the number of distant ways to uh, reach that step dp sub i will store the number of ways to reach the i step because ca uh, base cases are like if one and two representing the number of ways to reach the first and second steps then a loop run, runs from the third step to the end step in each iteration the number of ways to reach the current step i is calculated as the sum of ways to reach the previous two steps exactly so we get the previous one step and the previous two steps we add them together and we put them in the i uh, step solution. Finally, the function returns dp sub n, which represents the number of distant ways to reach the nth step, effectively solving the climbing stairs problem using dynamic programming. And what we have to say is, uh, is this top-down approach, which uh, using memoization, m o memoization. I I think it's like this. How do you spell it? M e m. So M-E-M-O-I, okay, M-E-M-O-I, -E M-E-M-O-I, I think it's like that. No, the provided code implements a bottom-up so, uh, approach using dynamic program, not a top-down approach with memoization. Okay, uh, I mean, we, we made a mistake, but it's totally fine. At least we, we double-checked it. Here's why. Now, I was thinking maybe it was a top-down approach. Wait a minute. Yeah, I was thinking it was a top-down approach, which basically starts with the bigger uh, solution and breaks it up to a smaller solution. But actually, if you look at the code pretty, uh, you know, neatly, we start from the smallest solutions. You see that? We start from n is equal to one and n is equal to two. We basically start from smaller solutions and gradually go up our way to the larger solution and then return it. So basically, this is a bottom-up approach, and it's called tabulation. Uh, bottom-up dynamic programming, also known as memoir. Wait, top-down dynamic programming 
also known as memoization, involves solving the problem recursively by breaking it down into smaller subproblems and storing the results of those subproblems in a data structure using an array or a map so that they can be used, re, uh, reused later without re recomputation. Now, over here, what we have is this one, bottom-up dynamic programming, um, which is, as implemented in the provided code, it starts with solving the smallest subproblems and builds up to the larger problem. It iterates through all possible states from the smallest problem to the largest using previously computed values to calculate the correct value. In the context of the climbing stairs problem, the bottom-up approach fills in an array dp where each element dp sub i represents the number of ways to climb i stairs, starting from the base cases i uh, dp sub 1 and dp sub 2 and iterating up to dp sub n. In summary, the provided code uses bottom-up dynamic programming, which is more iterative approach, whereas a top-down approach and with memoization would involve recursive function calls with caching or intermediate results. Now, I basically understand here that uh, there was no recursion going on, but it was kind of like a tabulation method, so that's why it was a bottom-up, kind of made sense. Um, and a top-down approach is, in the context of the climbing stairs problem, a memoization solution would involve writing a recursive function where each time you calculate the number of ways to climb n stairs, you check if you have already computed it before and return if available. Otherwise, you compute it recursively. So essentially, whenever the key concept recursion comes, you would say it's a top-down solution. And whenever there's no recursion, you would say it's a bottom-up solution. And by looking at the program and the code sequence, you would definitely say it's a bottom-up solution because we're going from the smallest to the largest, all right? And that's why we're using tabulation. Um, and if it was a, you know, a top-down approach, which is memoization, it would add to use recursion. Like in the context of the climbing stairs problem, a memoized solution would involve writing a recursion, recursive function which, where each time you calculate the number of ways to climb n stairs, you check if you have already computed it before and return it if available, otherwise compute it recursively. So basically that's another technique, um, but I hope you like this explanation. We got a little bit of uh, correctness from ChatGPT because of the mistake that we thought it was something else, but kudos that we've completed it and stick around for the next video.